Hi, I'm Sherry McGill, and you're watching Lessons Learned. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lessons Learned. Today I'm going to take you on a little journey with me uh, on this um, art quilt that I've been commissioned to do. And I just wanted to show you what my method is for accomplishing this. Um, this is not necessarily a tutorial, but you may be able to glean some things from it that are helpful for you in the future. And please leave any comments if you have any suggestions for me, uh, some ways that I could improve as well. So I just wanted to give you a little overview of how I started this project. Um, this particular fabric here is a, is a white on white grunge. I don't remember the exact name of it, but I'm actually using the wrong side of it because this side seems a little bit um, too creamy. But I did like the aspect of the, um, the white patches for my sky area here. Now this one here, it looks to be just a, a plain white or an ivory. But uh, I had this already and I think that it's just going to really add something to it uh, by using this grunge. And then I have my other fabrics up here that coordinate with these. The gray, the rust, the mustard, and the peach. So um, I've got those all, all ironed out. But to start with, I, I needed to really get oriented on a full piece of fabric. So I cut my fabric five inches bigger all the way around of the finished size. And the client wanted a 25 by 28, a very specific size. So I put five inches all the way around to allow for batting, backing, quilting, all of that. It's a little bit excess, but uh, I think I'm going to need that to be able to, like I said, stay oriented as far as where these pieces are going to fall. So I went ahead and measured a 25 by 28 square all the way around and marked that with a pencil. You probably can barely see my pencil line, but it, there one, you can see that one. And then I also went through and marked about where this point is and this point is on the outer uh, edges there outside of the square. So what I'm going to do first is uh, lay my um, gray across here and um, pay attention to this mark right here as I free uh, form on pencil on the gray this shape right here and then I'll come back and also do that with the rust from here because that is about even with that so I'm just going to use that line that I put there uh, to kind of orient me as far as where to start that curve and this curve and then I have a line right here for this one also over here is how far I want that to go up so I'm going to get started doing that right now. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go with that. Uh, I'm outside of my borders here. I have plenty on both sides. Close on that one, but it's going to be okay. I could probably actually move that one over more and give a little bit more of a dramatic dip right here. Um, 
like I said many many times I'm not an artist and you know this is all up to interpretation you can't copy exactly somebody else's curves and lines always if you're not an artist <laughs> so I'm just gonna go with what I have here um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a line of stitching a quarter inch from these edges and I'll probably use the color of thread uh, individual to each color here because that could possibly be seen I don't want to use white or black or anything like that so there's that and then I'll come back when I've got that all together and lay them back out again and see how it looks so I just want you to see my first one where I did the stitching on the edge I used a two and a half inch length and then I just turned it over and pressed it with a dry iron because I had to get my fingers in there really closely and I didn't want to burn myself so then uh, once I had it all tacked down around that edge and I came back to the front and steamed it so now I just have to do that to the the rust colored one and the gray one so here's what I've got so far um, I just wanted to show you how I did these edges I just came in with a about a two and a half stitch I believe and turned it over and steamed it uh, actually I didn't have steam on when I was folding this so as not to burn myself but once I got it all tacked uh, over I came back and steamed the front so I did that on the tops of all three pieces and then now I'm going down through and carefully tacking it all into place and the next step will be permanently sewing it down to the uh, the white background base okay so here is where I am currently uh, I've got all the pieces on uh, sorry about the shadow but you can see how I did just a very slight stitch and then down here on the yellow I changed my um, thread out to make sure it didn't show up very much and then I also went ahead and put stitching all around the edge to keep that in its place I mean with the top stitching it's pretty much not going anywhere but the bulk of the rest of the material I wanted to make sure that it it didn't bunch up when I go to quilt it and I still have to put my little Sun on and I think I'm going to uh, do the interfacing method with that like I did on the batik boho quilt where I just put the another circle of interfacing all the way around and turn it inside out and then um, iron it on there and then go back and stitch it around the edge just like I did the mountains so that will be next and then I already have my a piece of batting that I found that was the perfect size for it and my backing I'm just going to use the same grunge fabric that I have for the sky and this is not going to take very long to quilt at all it's only 25 by 28 so we'll see you when I'm doing some of that stuff okay here I am at the machine and I'm getting ready to quilt actually I had already filmed some of the quilting but I ran out of space on my phone and I didn't get to um, keep that footage it didn't let me keep it so um, this is what I've done so far I'm just doing the up and down lines like the client wanted and I'm doing a 7 8 inch in between which is a little more narrow than the picture that was sent to me but um, this is about half the size of the other quilt so the other one looked like it may have been two two and a half inches between so I decided to go a little bit narrower to keep within the uh, the size 
uh, constraint that I have with this small size. But I'm just using a, a very light uh, cream um, thread for this that goes with this. Now it is running through the colored portions, but uh, I think that's going to be fine. Um, it's going to give it that obvious quilted look. And then uh, I'm also marking as I go uh, 7 eighths of an inch. You asked me why 7 eighths of an inch. Well, it was kind of an accident. I should have just done an inch. But <laughs> anyway, I can see the 7 eighths inch mark on the ruler just fine. But I'm just kind of marking the rows as I go with a friction pen. And this will iron out. And I'm just making a... Um, a dashed line like a dotted line uh, down through here and then just following that with my sewing machine I did change my needle as well so that I get a good uh, finish on it here and uh, it looks like the stitching's coming out really good I am using a four stitch length which uh, I like because I like to see the stitching so it's going along pretty good and I've got about uh, almost half of the first half done. Okay, so that's one whole side and I'm going to go over here and iron the lines out so you can get a good um, idea of what it's going to look like. Okay, so there you can kind of see what it's going to look like. And now I just have the other side to do. So I will do that off camera and then I'll show you the next step in the next clip. Alright, so all of a sudden I'm done. <laughs> but I want to show you some things. I didn't film everything. For example, the uh, rest of the quilting. You'd seen me do half of that. And then... Um, the binding I just recently had a video out on in detail on how to put binding on or at least how I do it and uh, that's the juicy table runner if you want to go back and find that video if you need binding help but uh, yeah I got my um, binding on here and everything looks pretty good and the uh, client wanted a backing or a hanger that didn't show. So I just made these little pockets. I just took a five inch square, folded in half to make this uh, finished edge here. And then I put my raw edges up in my binding. So when I was sewing the first layer of stitching on the binding from the front, I uh, had this pinned here so that it would uh, catch in that stitching and then of course when I turned my binding over it caught again so it's pretty pretty strong there I took a dowel rod and just kind of made the ends a little little bit pointy because if I left them super round they would make a little dent in the front and then I just put a little little tiny burlap ring string here double tied it and and uh, that way you can stick that in a tack or something or even a small nail whatever and you won't see it so that's how that looks so there we go and I will 
put on here a picture of it hanging up. Okay, that's kind of what it would look like hanging up. It is kind of small. It's 25 by 28. I felt like it was going <laughs> to appear bigger than that, but yeah. I've sent pictures already to the girl who is gifting this, and she is very thrilled with it. So hopefully the recipient will be too. All right, thanks for tuning in for this, and I hope you found it interesting. And maybe I'll get to do some more projects for people someday. All right, see you on the next one.